Hello everybody and welcome to a video about an image I got in Austria the other week. Um, I said I was going to do an edit video of, of this photo, so, so that's what this is. A couple of bits of housekeeping before I start though. Uh, this particular image is available as a print at the moment, it's on sale well, it's, it's for sale, but it's also on sale. So if you've watched a few of my videos before, typically as you might have seen with these kinds of images, what I do is after they go live or after the video that I feature them in goes live, they're on sale half price for about a week or exactly a week. And uh, this is no different. Apart from the fact that this has already been on sale for like four days, and I'm gonna extend that for a week past this video since this video is all about this image. Uh, so there's 50 A4s and 50 A3s, well there was, um, the A4s are selling really well, there's still quite a few A3s, so if you're interested, check them out this week, or the, the first week this video goes live in case you're watching after, and uh, yeah, they'll be half price. Then they'll be full price if there are any left at the end of the first week that this video is live for. That sounds way more complicated than I actually think it is, hopefully, I made myself clear. Also actually, any images that you see in these videos or on my Instagram, it's not a problem for me to sell any of them as prints. If you want one of them uh, and they're not available on my website, details below as to how you, how you get one of those prints because I don't think all of you will be interested in that so I shan't rabbit it on. The second thing to say about this video is that uh, this image might not be to your taste. I mean, I've gone pretty hard on the colours and I've used multiple images, stitched them together to create the final piece. That said, even if this image isn't to your taste, um, I still think hopefully there will be some stuff you can take from this process um, and use with your own work regardless of how different it might be. And third thing, I'm on a bit of a mission at the moment to try and get to 3 million Instagram followers by the end of the month. Um, it's not going that well. So if you watch my videos, if you enjoy them, if you use Instagram and you're not following me, if you could, if you could please do that because, well yeah, I'm a little bit off my, my target. Anyhow, enough of the self-promotion. Let's get cracking with this image. So, as you might remember if you watched that video where I was in Slovenia and Austria, and I was taking this photo towards the end of the video, I think it was, Yes. I went to this location the evening before I, I got the images for the final photo. And it wasn't ideal, to be honest. I mean, there were tourists everywhere. I was kind of hustling to get any composition, let alone a perfect one. And the weather wasn't ideal, the light wasn't ideal, there wasn't really any cloud cover, and it's quite windy, so the lake was really choppy, and there was zero reflection or anything interesting going on with the water. So it became quite clear that I was gonna have to go back the next morning, the morning that we were leaving. Uh, so I was gonna go early, didn't really know what sort of final image I was, I was hoping to end up with, but I was hoping for some good light, some interesting cloud, um, and maybe some, some decent foreground interest as well. And uh, none of those things came together all at once. So in this video, basically, I'm gonna show you what I did to try and combat that. So here's an image I got the night before when it was really crowded and stuff. And as you can see, as I said, uh, there's really choppy water. The light isn't particularly interesting up here at the top and uh, there's not a whole lot going on in the mid-ground either other than this quite sort of ugly car park. Uh, so I decided to go back the next morning and this is the first image that I got the next morning. As you can see down here, these are all the images I'm gonna sort of talk you through. I got hundreds of images, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna make you sit through all of those. So as you can see when I got there the next morning, there was pretty much nothing in the way of cloud. Obviously this is way before any light kind of hits any of the buildings or the mountains or anything. All that's really to say from this image is that there's quite nice sort of lanterns with a nice reflection in the water. And at the time I was thinking that I might be able to utilize that in the final image, or that quickly became clear that actually that wasn't gonna be the case because, well, it was illuminating what is the worst, weakest part of the image, I think, which is this car park. I didn't expect this car park to be full at half five in the morning, but there you go. Also, you might hear my laptop start whirring in a minute. It doesn't really enjoy screen recordings, as I'm sure I've said in another video before. So anyway, I hung around. Um, this is just another image from the morning. This one's been edited. If you ever want to see your original file in Lightroom after you've made edits quickly, um, if you're in the develop module, all you have to do is hit backslash and it takes you back to your original. As you can see up here, it says before. And then you hit it again, it takes you back to your edits. Um, in case you didn't know that. So yeah, I hung around, hung around. Eventually the lights went off and as you can see at this point, there's a bit of cloud coming over and I was hoping that this was just gonna keep coming right so it'd sit over the mountains and then when the light hit the mountains, there'd be some sort of glowing color, but that, uh, well, that didn't happen. Stayed around some more. This is just before any light hits the mountains or the village. 
Um, this is the original, this is the edited, and as you can see, the cloud's not really coming to anything, and I'm, uh, I'm starting to panic a little bit at this point, because, I mean, it would have been a bit of a rubbish image if there was no cloud interest at all. So, as I was starting to panic, I looked to my left, and I noticed that a few of the mountains over to my left had amazing cloud. I mean, it, it didn't look like this. This was the original, and I've, I've made some tweaks to make it look like that. But that is exactly what I was looking for to be over the mountains that I was trying to shoot. And it didn't look like it was gonna happen, so I made sure to get a load of images of these clouds in case I needed to composite them in to uh, the image I was actually trying to get. So anyway, long time passes, and I end up with this. And so as you can see, this is pretty much the perfect time light-wise now, because there's some interesting stuff going on with the light in the mountains, but there's no harsh light hitting the village yet, so it's all sort of quite nicely balanced, in my opinion, anyway. Also, there's this boat, which I think adds a bit of mid-ground interest, um, as well as distracting from this rubbish car park. Of course, the problem is that there's still nothing interesting going on with the clouds, so I think I'm probably gonna have to rely on those clouds I took before. And also, there's really nothing to speak of in the bottom third of the image. Now, because of the way I shot this, quite wide angle, this bottom third of the image is really quite imposing. It kind of catches your eye first. There's no doubt about that, you can't really help it. Um, but there's nothing going on at all. So I was a little bit worried about that and thought it was worth hanging around for maybe another half an hour or so to hope that something was gonna happen in the bottom third of this image. And lo and behold, about 20 minutes later, after I'd moved, obviously, I got this, which is way better than I could have hoped for, just two little ducks just swimming to the bottom of the image in exactly the perfect position. So now I was pretty confident I had all the elements of the image I needed. So I had some interest in the bottom third of the image, I had a decent mid-ground, and also I had some interesting cloud. Now as you can see, this cloud doesn't exactly match the, uh, the mid-ground image that I'm going for. Here obviously the sun has just hit these clouds, it's kind of purple and orange and all kinds of interesting different tones. Uh, whereas in this image, it's probably about 45 minutes later, the light is quite yellow. So as I said at the top of the video, from a purist point of view, technically this image probably isn't really correct. Because in the end you're going to have different colours of light going on, and it might not look exactly right. Um, personally, I don't really care about that. I just want something cool and interesting to look at. But if you're a purist, you might not like that. Um, doesn't matter. I'll show you how I go about mixing um, the elements of, of these images, and hopefully that'll be useful. Anyway, so without further ado, I'm going to take these three images. I'm going to take this one, and the mid-ground, and the foreground, and I'm going to right-click, and I'm going to go to Edit In, and open as layers in Photoshop. So laptop's really going for it now. You hear that? In fact, I remembered the last time I spoke about my laptop going crazy with a screen recording in a video, people gave me some quite interesting advice. They said I should like hoover out the back of the laptop in case lots of dust has got trapped in front of the fans and stuff. I haven't done that yet. Probably should have before this video, but uh, there we go. Right, I now have my three images. If I turn off the top layer, which is the clouds, I see my mid-ground layer, which I'm gonna put at the bottom because I kind of consider that my base layer. So the first thing I'm gonna do is add my foreground interest. So to do that, I'm gonna make that layer visible, and then I'm gonna change the opacity to 50%-ish. And as you can see, the images don't really align because as I said, I'd moved at the time that I took this image, so it doesn't really work. Now I could do a couple of things here. I could select both layers and then go to edit, and auto align layers, but I'm not gonna do that because I'm not interested in aligning every single part of the image. Really all I want to align is the ducks. So to do that, I am just going to press Command T and I'm gonna try and make sure that these ducks sit in a sensible spot. Something like this. Now I should say it's been a couple of weeks since I edited this image and I'm just going from scratch. So I'm not gonna spend hours on this as I did with the original photo just because this is for the purposes of, of showing you how I did it. But um, hopefully I remember exactly how I did it. Okay, so that looks good enough to me. I'm then gonna take the opacity back up to 100% and I'm gonna give that layer a layer mask. Then I'm gonna press Command I to invert that layer mask and the whole image is disappeared. Now I'm gonna go to brush and I'm gonna select a relatively soft, big brush. I'm gonna zoom into the area where the ducks are. I'm gonna make sure that white is selected on the brush, that I've got normal mode selected on the brush, and the brush is 100%, and then I'm just gonna unmask them. Really soft brush, otherwise you'll end up with really odd lines. That looks pretty good. I might also try and bring out these ducks that were behind somewhere over here. 
Now I need to be careful because as you can see I wasn't in exactly the same spot and therefore the shadow of this tree doesn't quite align. So I'm going to have to try and get rid of that shadow and keep the original shadow. Something like that. Now as I said before, this isn't perfect but for the purposes of demonstration it will do. So that takes care of my foreground. I've now got something interesting going on in the foreground of the image and I think the midground's pretty good because of this boat predominantly. And also the light hitting these mountains is quite interesting. But as I said before, there's nothing really going on in the cloud and that's a bit of an issue because this image just doesn't shout without any good cloud cover. So I'm gonna go back up to this top image and as you can see, because I took this image on the, uh, the Panasonic G80 rather than the G9, the file's smaller because it's 16 megapixels versus uh, 20 megapixels. Um, now to solve that, I could do a couple of things. I could either just go Command T for transform and just stretch it out, which probably isn't the best way to do it. Or I could go up to this layer, go uh, duplicate layer with a right click. I want to, I want to put it on a new document and I'm gonna go back to this file and I'm just gonna check the image size. So image size is, 3 by 5184. So I'm going to go back to the G9 file, the G80 file, sorry, and I'm going to try and match that image size. So I'm going to go 3888 and 5. So that's pretty much close enough. I'm going to make sure that preserve details enlargement is selected, not any of these others, and I'm going to click OK. Perfect. Then I'm going to duplicate this layer again and I'm going to take it back to the file that I'm working on. So now as you can see, we've got two files. We've got one that's the right size and one that's not. So I'm just going to hide the one that's not and we're left with the one that's the right size. Now, I'm going to hide that layer. I'm also going to hide the, uh, the ducks just so that I'm left with my base layer. And I'm going to go to channels and I want to inspect these channels to see which of them is the highest contrast. So I'll turn off red, because I can see it's not red. It's not green as well. In fact, in these thumbnails, it's quite clear that it's blue. So what I'm gonna do with this blue, is I'm just gonna drag it down to create new channel. So it's gonna create a copy of blue, and then I'm gonna click Command L to bring up the levels, and I'm just gonna increase the contrast in this image as much as I sensibly can. Something like, that, I think will do. And then I'm gonna go down here and load the channel as a selection. And you can see the marching ants around the sky. And I'm gonna go back to layers, and I'm gonna go back to this sky image, and I'm gonna give it a layer mask. Now, as you can see, the sky is now loaded into the image. Now, a couple of problems. Some of the uh, below the mountain stuff in this image has been partially selected as well. So I need to make sure that all of that is masked out with the black brush which is relatively easy to do. I just paint over all of the parts of the image that I don't want to be affected, like so. Relatively simple step. And then as we get closer to the top of the image where the mountains are, I'm gonna take a little bit more care. So what I'm gonna do is zoom in, give me a good view of what I'm working with. And I'm gonna to go to overlay with my brush. And I'm also gonna take down the opacity a little bit. And still with black selected to mask away parts of the image that I don't want, I'm just gonna start painting over those areas. Still a really, really soft brush. Okay, now obviously you could mess around with adjustment layers until the cars came home. I'm not gonna do that because obviously I've already done some tweaks in Lightroom to all the files before I imported them into Photoshop. But the sky and the mountain does look a little bit bright to me, so I'm gonna go down to adjustment layers, hit curves, and I'm gonna just bring the curve down around about the middle to about there, I guess something like that. Now I don't want it applied to the whole image, so I'm gonna go down to the gradient tool, which is hidden behind the paint bucket tool sometimes, and I'm just gonna draw a gradient down. Oh, no, that's the wrong way. So I'm gonna draw a gradient up, and that just means that it doesn't affect this bottom half of the image where I don't want the gradient to be. Uh, I need to make my ducks layer active again, 
So there we go. And the only problem I see now with this image is that the sky is not properly reflected in the reflections in the water. So what I need to do is duplicate the sky layer. So I do that by clicking Command J. And now what I want to do is go Edit, Transform, Flip Vertical. And all that's gonna do is give me basically a reflection of that image. Uh, what I now want to do is go from normal to overlay in my blending modes. And that actually looks pretty good. Now if you move the layer around, you can kind of get the gist of, of what that's done. Uh, it doesn't quite look right at the moment because it's too sharp. I mean, as you can see, there's lots of movement in this water um, and that isn't reflected in this reflection. So what I'm gonna do firstly is reduce the opacity because I think it's a bit strong. But then also, I'm gonna turn this layer into a smart object by going right click and convert to smart object. That sometimes takes a little bit of time if you've got lots of stuff going on on a two year old MacBook Pro. Come on. Okay, we're in. And now I can go to filter, blur, and motion blur. The angle needs to be pretty much horizontal, so zero. And I'm gonna go for a distance of, I don't know, 144, we'll start there. But the beauty of using a smart object is that you can use smart filters. And by doing that, I can then just go back into motion blur and I can change the distance as I please. Nothing's permanent, nothing is destructive. And that's pretty much that. I'm happy with the water, I'm happy with my ducks, uh, I'm happy with the midground. I love the mountains and the light that's hitting the mountains. And I do quite like this cloud, even though technically, maybe it's not quite correct and maybe maybe it wouldn't happen i don't know ever in real life maybe it wouldn't happen all that often i don't know but i like it so that pretty much concludes my changes in photoshop so now what i'm going to do is group all of these layers together to create a new layer i'll put the uh the shortcut for that just here or somewhere on the screen now i'm going to take that layer i'm going to duplicate that layer into a new document and that's where I'm going to save it from. And that just means that not all the layers are saved and therefore the file is smaller and more manageable. Okay, so then once the file's open in Lightroom, I'll then do a few more tweaks. But before I do that, I'm going to right click on the image, go edit in, and then go to Viveza 2, which is one of the NIC collection of um, software programs. It's a Google free plugin thing. I really like it. So Viveza 2. And then basically in this program, you have what are called control points. So I'm going to stick a control point on these ducks. And then from that control point, typically what I change is structure, which is essentially just local um, contrast, local contrast, which is kind of like clarity in Lightroom, but I quite like the way that this program does it. I'm also gonna stick a control point on the midground, and I'm just gonna boost the structure there too. And I'd be tempted to do it on the mountains, but I think I'm gonna leave the mountains. I might just add one on the village here and then save and then it spits out another version of the file to have back in Lightroom. Once that's done I'm going to go and have a play with the colours I think. So saturation I feel like we could do with some more green. Turn up the green! That looks a bit much so I'm going to go into luminance and just boost up the luminance of the green as well. Um, also the clouds I want to bring out the clouds a little bit so I'm going to just bring down the luminance of the purple and maybe also the magenta, that's a bit much. But I'm gonna boost the saturation of those two a little bit as well. Ooh, that's way too much. That looks a bit ridiculous. Um, saturation of the yellow, perhaps. Ooh, maybe just a little bit, but I'm gonna to need to cancel that with luminance two. And then, I mean, you know, this is all just personal preference. And uh, this is starting to look a little bit like the image that I edited a couple of weeks ago. Not quite as good, but then I've not spent anywhere near as much time on it, so that, that makes sense. But by and large, that's how I edited this file. Um, as I say, it's probably not one for the purists, and it might not be to your taste, but compositing and stitching images together is, is basically my background, and I think largely it'll always potentially be part of my workflow, uh, because the power of being able to stitch multiple images together just helps with storytelling, and ultimately, I think that's what photography is about. Certainly for me, I want to be able to tell a good story. So if I need to wait 15 minutes for a duck to come past, and if it doesn't come past at the same time as a boat, I'm not going to kick myself that they weren't taking place at exactly the same time. Because the story, I think, is better when they're together. And it's exactly the same thing with the clouds. So 
yeah, that's my take on it. Um, thank you very much for watching. I hope that was useful. As I said, if you can give me a little follow on Instagram to try and get me up to 3 million by the end of this month, that'd be great. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. Let me know if this was helpful or if you've got any further questions on what I did. And uh, see you next time. Thank you.